Only men with the guts to stand up for their women, the vermin in Reuters, the vermin on the left in the media are calling the real men Nazis for standing up for the women. Do you know that? Sickening. It pisses me off so much, and it, it also annoys me that they have to wear masks because they know the media is going to attack them. And not They have to wear masks because their own government will turn on them rather than the Muslim criminals. Just as our government will turn on real men instead of the invaders. Just as they've turned their eyes away from the invaders coming over the border and they're telling anyone who stands up to them they're a criminal. Just as they executed that man in Oregon and said he was the criminal. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. I could start yelling like Hillary Clinton, but I'm not going to do that. Make no mistake about it. It's Rock and Roll Friday in the Savage Nation. And I've got a long way to go to the election. And I intend to be here and squeeze the maximum amount of change that I can out of every day that I have on radio. I will squeeze every last drop of change that I can out of this program, The Savage Nation. I went to Chinatown way back in old Hong Kong to get right, some welcome back to The Savage Nation. So what I notice is missing in any of these debates, Republican or Democrat, is any discussion of the rapes of uh, women over the uh, New Year's Eve by Muslim immigrants, the complete and total enslavement and rape and murder of young girls in the Middle East by Muslims, the criminal activities of Barack Obama. No one talks about this. Neither uh, the Maddow people, you'd expect that from her. I mean, that's what they are. They're, they're thin when it comes right down to it, they're thin in, in substance. The other side, you're telling me Fox News is any better? When have they last attacked or asked the question about Obama's crimes against humanity or Obama's crimes against America? You say crimes against humanity, what are you talking about? Obama depicted as murderous devil in downtown Moscow. A video depicting President Obama feasting on the souls of half a million people was projected onto buildings in downtown Moscow early Friday. This is an amazing story. And the importance of it is that there is some validity to what this man has actually done around the world. And what they're talking about, what do they mean by murderous, murderous uh, devil? Well, they're talking about uh, things that he's done around the world. The president's face gradually turns red, and he's talking about him chewing and symbolically destroying the populations of Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Ukraine, and Libya. They haven't forgotten. And a death toll rises next to Obama's face to 561,832. As the video concludes with a caption reading, Obama, welcome to the Hague Tribunal in 2016. This footage was projected onto a building in Moscow's Pushkin Square next to Russia's uh, <clears throat> first ever McDonald's location. It's on a nearby wall not far from the British Embassy. Now, why do you think they did this? Because they're in a verbal war with Obama, and Obama thinks it's a one-way street. But the Russians see it another way. They say that many experts believe that, believe that coups, uh, C-O-U-P-S, civil wars, and civilian slayings in the country shown in the clip were, quote, organized by a direct or indirect participation of American political consultants and NGOs as well as directly on the orders of the U.S. president, according to an English translation. So there are activists in other parts of the world, in this case Moscow, who do not think that Barack Obama is such a saint. And here we have Democratic presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton, who is running to succeed Obama, who says on Thursday that Russia is the greatest threat to U.S. national security, even more so than North Korea and China. She's insane. What does this maniac want, a war with Russia? She's out of her mind. The fact of the matter is that Bernie Sanders, as crazy as he is on economics, had more reason than she did with regard to the gravest threat to America, who he said is North Korea. He showed some constraint and some intelligence on that issue. She showed nothing but stupidity and danger to the American people, especially after eight years of downsizing and destroying the morale of the military. What is she thinking? Why is she targeting Russia? Where does she come off with this? Why would she want a war with Russia? What do we gain by this? And on this case, this is why Donald Trump is the most 
uh, intelligent of all the candidates on both sides. He said that Russia is our natural ally against the Islamic State. Not so with Ted Cruz, who agrees with Hillary Clinton that we should go to war with Russia. Where is Ted Cruz getting that insanity from? From the same neocon advisors who advised the Bushes, who dragged us into wars in Iraq. That's one man's opinion. 855-407-282. Many of you are holding on the issue of the housing crisis that, that was, which many fear will come back, and on the Madoff uh, show from last night on, on ABC. Again, Clinton last night attacks big pharma and big business, and you know what? I took umbrage at it, and I'll tell you why. It's an easy shot, but it makes no sense. It's easy to say big pharma is bad, but I, for a year, uh, actually a year or two of my life, worked in pharmacology with one of the great scientists in the world of pharmacology, and I learned an awful lot about how much it costs to invent and to test and to market a drug. Ask yourself why there have been no drugs produced in Cuba. Is it because of racism? No, it's because of socialism. Idiots. The very drugs that you live on are produced by capitalism, fools. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. You know how I look at you? Now, as a guy who doubled my money in six years. 388,693,119. Total cash accounts as of 9 a.m. this morning. <laughs> you ever heard of Bernie Madoff? Strong, consistent returns, year in, year out. Everywhere that I look, red flags. You saying he's front running? I'm accusing him of running a Ponzi scheme. We got a problem, Bernie. Dow Industrials were off almost Half its value. Nightmare on Wall Street. Full scale meltdown. How does Bernie make a profit when everyone else is taking a bath? <laughs> Want to know how he does it? He doesn't. Madoff is a fraud. I have something to tell you. How much did you lose? Fifty billion dollars. Authorities are calling it the largest financial scam ever. I'm watching right now. Somebody turned me in. Left us no choice. Wall Street is going to call me a fraud? You're ripping this family apart. When this thing goes down, lives are going to be destroyed. Us or him. You want to save yourself, Mom? Let him rot in jail where he belongs. People want to get richer, and they don't want the risk, and they don't want the worry. I was the magician, and nobody wants the magic trick explained. And that's what you get for believing in magic. <laughs> Made off. Well... Right, Madoff. I watched part two last night on ABC. I wasn't as good as part one. I, I'm too many ads this time. <clears throat> but aside from that, it lost its uh, initial impact. However, it's worth talking about on the show because what Madoff did to America, $50 billion scam, is what Obama is doing to America on a $50 trillion scam. Make no mistake about it. Printing money is no different than what, uh, what Madoff did. Madoff ran a Ponzi scheme. What's a Ponzi scheme? It was named for a man named Ponzi who invented it. He's the first one to, to invent. What he did was he had a guy invest. He never invested the money that he gave him. He told him it was making X percent a year, and it wasn't being invested nor making anything. And he got the next guy to invest in the next, the next. They used the next guy's money to pay the profits for the first guy, I meaning he never paid the, the principal. So if you invest a million dollars, and the guy tells you you're making 20% a year, so he, only, he has to give you $20,000 a year in profit, right? Twenty No, $200,000 a year in profit on a million dollars. That would be 20%. So he pays him the 200 grand that shows up in his balance, and everyone's very happy. And then when the economy tanked in 08, people got panicked, and they said, give me back the principal. And he very reluctantly gave it back to only a very few people. And that's when he started to melt, when, it, when the Madoff scam started to melt down. The economy that we're living here in this nation, and for God knows how long it's been this way, maybe since Nixon took us off the gold standard, in my opinion, it's all funny money, is fundamentally the same thing. How do you think that they're paying for all of these federal jobs? How do you think they're paying for all of these uh, fat pensions? How do you think... He's paying for the fat welfare checks, the fat Medicare checks, and all of the other things. 
basically on your money, on the middle class that pays taxes legitimately, he's using your money to kite the other money. And the question is, when is it going to all come down? Nobody really knows. We read this morning from uh, an economist at Citibank that the world economy is in a death spiral. world economy seems trapped in a death spiral, which when I saw that this morning, I, I was quite pleased that I ran a show yesterday on the Madoff scam and on the housing bubble of, uh, of 08, which collapsed, because it showed me again that my instincts in radio are still operational. And that's why we're talking about it again today, as well as the other pro uh, problems that we're talking about, including the liar Hillary Clinton and the liar Rachel Maydow, who pretend to be feminists and won't talk about the rape epidemic being conducted by refugees in Europe, uh, the rape and kidnapping and slavery of young girls in the Middle East by Muslim, uh, Muslim men. It's all cowardice and lies. That's what I'm talking about. If you care to want to join the conversation, it's 855 400 7282. Let's begin by going to uh, WJR. Tom on line three, what's your topic, please? Sure. Uh, up until 2008, I was an employee of the Citigroup uh, working as a mortgage advisor. And uh, we were basically given directions from uh, up above in the chain uh, that no matter what, you have to give out the loan. Now, we were giving out loans left and right uh, for buying homes. For people that were working for McDonald's, working for small time uh, making making less than twenty twenty five thousand dollars a year so in other words even though they didn't have income that could pay the mortgage you were told to give them the the, the mortgage right yes sir and how long did this go on oh it went on for for a very very long time now I'm a god fearing person I resigned in 2008 because I believe in karma I changed my whole profession I drive a truck now Really? You gave up mortgage banking to drive a truck because it's more honest? Yes, sir. It's very interesting. You know, that's that's a whole topic unto itself, by the way, which is people who have left the rat race to do something real and to do something honest so they could sleep at night and not have to take Zantac every morning or, or, or a Valium or a Prozac or this or that because they couldn't live with themselves. So the years you worked in banking, you felt guilty that you were doing something Ill, uh, immoral? Is that it? Yes, sir, increasingly. I'm sorry, not, not immoral, unethical is the, correct, is the correct word. So today as a truck driver, you uh, feel you're doing an ethical thing. You're just living a real life and doing something honest, right? Much more peaceful. It, it pays off. It's hard work, but it pays off. What is your religion? I'm a Muslim, sir. No, I'm asking. It's a very important question because people have to understand that there are people guided by their religious principles, including those who are often disparaged, even on this show, in a more generic way. And I think we have to have people like you call more often, and I thank you for doing so, for calling from WJR in Detroit. WSBA Radio, Chad, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Dr. Savage, I'm calling about Bernie Madoff. I do believe his son knew what was going on, and the reason is, is how his business was structured. Hedge funds take two commissions. They take 2% of your money up front, and they usually take 20% of the upside. What Bernie did was he waived the 2% for almost all money coming in, and when questioned about it, he said, well, I have this brokerage business, which his sons were in charge of, and I trade all of my hedge funds through the brokerage business, so I make up the commissions on that side. Um, so his sons... Uh, we're in charge of the trading side, and uh, many ex-Madoff um, employees were curious that they never ever saw order flow from the hedge fund. They never got any trading orders to trade anything from the hedge fund, and it was one of the largest hedge funds in the world. So the right. were either incompetent uh, or they were a part of it. Mm -hmm. But you think, the thing is, I remember there was one scene in Madoff in, in, in part one the other night where they say, how, uh, how come you don't take a commission. Remember he said, I make my money on the trades, I don't need a commission, remember that? Yep, yep. And they should have known right then and there it was a fraud, right? Yeah, they should have known because, you know, uh, his trading uh, floor at one time traded 10% of the entire market, and he had a $50 billion hedge fund, which was way bigger than almost any of them. And he never, uh, you know, put it... Well, the real villain here is, is the, head of, the head of the Security Exchange Commission, 
whose entire job is to prevent